My very first power tool was this 10 inch table saw from Ace Hardware. I got it 20 years ago and when we moved into this house I built a crude but functional cart for it. It has storage for a fence and a couple of push sticks as well as lockable casters. And here you can see I built it to store away perfectly under my workbench when not in use. I recently upgraded to the DeWalt DWE 7480. It's perfect for my small shop, but unfortunately when mounted on the old cart, it doesn't store away under my work surface. After a lot of thought and planning, there were five must-have features on this cart. It had to be mobile, both have an in-feed and out-feed table, room for a dust separator, and accessory storage. This build requires two full sheets of 3 quarter inch plywood and a half sheet of 1 quarter inch plywood. I worked through my cut list and I was so thankful that I opted for a table saw with a 24 inch rip capacity. The back of the cart required some notches, so I made most of the cut on the table saw and then used a jigsaw to finish it off, leaving a nice clean corner. I then labeled each piece with some masking tape to make the assembly process easier. I spent the rest of my morning drilling about 50 pocket holes on my DIY K4 Craig jig. I have more to do later on this build, so I'll spare you the footage for that now. Next I used the scrap to lay out the bottom of the cart. This helped me not only to identify where each piece went, but also to know where to drill pilot holes. I then flipped the bottom up on its side so I could align and screw on the back. The next step was to attach the inside wall of the cabinet. This right angle pocket hole clamp came in so handy on this project. I then repeated that process for the outside walls. The last and probably most difficult part of this phase was to glue and screw on the seat where the saw would sit without falling into the cabinet. Now I can move on to attaching the four inch lockable casters. I used two and a half inch cabinet screws where I could, but directly under the cavity required a smaller screw and a washer. Next, I used my considerable strength and moved the entire unit to the ground and attached the front support for the infeed table. Then I was able to move the saw onto the cart and use it while finishing the build. I used some plywood scraps to replicate the thickness of the infeed and outfeed tables and this revealed a near fatal design flaw. The clips on the rip fence didn't have enough clearance to fully engage. Luckily, it's not too much of an issue to move the rails out before attaching the fence. I taped a marker to the dust exhaust and moved the angle of the blade to show the rough cutout that was needed. I then used a jigsaw to cut the piece out so the hose would move easily. The next step in this build was to start working on the drawers. I used the two drawer slides plus two plywood scraps to replicate the thickness of the drawer sides to get the measurement for the front and back. I used a stop block on my miter saw to ensure I could get repetitive cuts so the drawers would be perfectly square and then drilled pocket holes so that would be easily concealed by the drawer front or in the back out of sight. I used the right angle pocket hole clamp again and assembled the drawers using glue and screws. For the bottom of the drawer, I used a slightly oversized piece of one quarter inch plywood and once I knew it was square, I secured it with glue and brads. Cutting it oversized allowed me to trim it to a perfect size using the flush cut bit on my router. I elevated the drawer slides using some 3 quarter inch plywood scraps and secured them to the inside of the cavity using half inch screws. I then used some quarter inch scraps under the drawer and attached the first two screws before disconnecting the slides and driving through the rest of the screws. I reattached the drawers and checked for proper function and was so relieved that it actually worked. To attach the drawer fronts, I used double-sided tape to hold them in place and drove in some screws from the inside. These were probably a little too big for this method, but it worked out okay. For the door on the dust separator, I used these concealed hinges which came with a template that made installation a breeze. There were multiple mounting options, so I just followed the instructions for the reveal I wanted and the base of the cart was just about done.
Moving on to the in and out feed tables. I wanted to wrap the edges in hardwood both for aesthetics and durability. I'm using some maple here cut into one quarter inch strips and I use glue and tape to wrap the in feed and out feed tables in the maple and let them dry overnight. The next day I used my flush cut saw to trim the pieces to size and then sanded them smooth going all the way to 220 grit. I got tricky with my clamps to hold the outfeed table in place so I could drive some screws from within the cabinet. And here's a great shot of me putting a screw right in the line of the track I'll be routing later. Watch where you put those pocket holes, folks. I then attached the infeed table and reinforced the bottom with some one quarter inch plywood. While that was drying, I leveled and secured the table saw to the cart and used a straight edge to draw where the tracks would go. After several minutes of sweating and anxiety, I used a straight cut bit to route away an eighth of an inch of material at a time until I got the desired depth. It was here that I decided my next tool purchase would be a proper router. And as to be expected, here the straight edge moved on me because I didn't have it clamped down hard enough. To fix it, I moved the edge over to clean up the cut, filled the gap with some maple and CA glue, and redid the cut. I covered this disaster on my Instagram stories, so if you don't already follow me there, I would love to have you join me and learn from my mistakes. And as if that wasn't enough, here I route right into that screw from earlier. To change the pace and reset my psyche, I glued some sandpaper to a scrap and cleaned up the tracks for a while. Worth it. I love shop made drawer and door handles, so I made some simple ones out of plywood for this. I used a piece of tape to make a template so I knew exactly where the pilot holes on the handle would go. I then installed one on each drawer and one on the door. I also put one on the front of the cart to make moving it around easier. To finish the top, I used a generous amount of paste wax. I'll be making a cross-cut sled soon, and this will help it slide across the surface with ease. And that about wraps this build up. Now I have plenty of storage for jigs and accessories, and I purposely didn't go into the details of the dust separator compartment because I'm going to make another video covering that. The mobility of this cart is a huge plus for me, as is the fact that I can store it away when not in use. I'm so happy with the way it turned out.